rail fanning has changed a lot since the 20th century, and technology has played a major part in that change. Digital cameras, wireless phones, scanners, and aerial drones have all made chasing trains in the 21st century easier and more satisfying than those that came before us could have ever imagined. The single biggest gain was the internet. The internet changed the game and gave rail fans information and tools to track, record, and showcase trains to a worldwide audience, something never before possible. Norfolk Southern Milepost 721.7. No defects. On the Norfolk Southern DNH River Line, hearing the default detector at milepost 721 at 5 a.m. on a Sunday morning will usually mean one thing. The northbound Roanoke, Virginia to Binghamton, New York manifest train 10Z. 10Z, which is pretty much the former 12R, which became the 14R, which became the 14Z for about two weeks in 2020, then became the 12Z and is now the 10Z. Who can keep up? In a past video, Pensy Fan had asked me what my favorite catch was and my answer was obvious at the time. Two true blue legacies of then modern day railroading. Now, for you younger rail fans, you may not remember the old Oakway leasers. Back when I was chasing trains, I didn't even have a scanner. I literally just went to the tracks and hoped that I saw something. The point of all of this historical babbling is that back in the day, catching foreign and or unusual power lashups was a game of being in the right place at the right time, or just knowing the right people. Fast forward 20 years to 2024 and technology, along with countless books and magazines, has made catching oddballs and anomalies easier than ever before. This in turn brings us to Yatesville, Pennsylvania, the home of the notorious Yatesville grade. If you've been following this channel for any period of time, then you probably know that the short but tough climb over the hill at Yatesville is the northbound warm-up to the treacherous 10-mile climb up to Clark Summit. But I digress. Back in 2018, I caught the train 14R working up the grade at Yatesville with an Operation Lifesaver Dash 9 that has since been rebuilt into an AC44C6M. The reason that I'm including this blast from the past is that today, I knew from a friend that the unique DC unit was on the point of this train, which is why I was in Yatesville to intercept. Back to the Future in 2023, October 15 to be exact, knowing that there would be sufficient light by the time that the 10Z made it to Yatesville, I pointed the car south to intercept.
Catching the 4002 on this day was not a first for me. That happened back in May of 2017 when I caught it heading south to Allentown Yard on the Sense Abolish Train 36T. It's shown sandwiched between an SD70M-2 and a slightly newer and shinier rebuilt sister. About a 10 minute delay getting out of Yatesville cost me dearly and by the time I made it to our normal spot, the 10Z was blasting through and it wasn't waiting for me. This led me to go a few miles to the extreme north end of town around an area called Chinchilla. The vegetation and overgrowth clearly showing that I hadn't shot at this location in a few years. To show you how much times have changed, here's a clip shot on Friday, February 16, 2018 of Detour Reroute Train 309. 309 was a Binghamton, New York to Bellevue, Ohio train. It's moving south through town today because of a derailment along its normal westbound route. Today's train has 158 cars and a mix of Union Pacific and BNSF locomotives.
As I mentioned at the start of this video, it was Sunday, October 15, and with it being so early and me having a full tank of gas, I decided to chase the Sonic Bonnet all the way to Bingo Town, so the next stop in today's unexpected adventure was New Milford. When it comes to catching trains, me and New Milford were not made for each other. I don't know what it is about New Milford, but every train that I've tried to catch here ends up being a fail. The first attempt was an 11Z back around 2017. After waiting for more than an hour after them getting track authorities out of Binghamton, I gave up hope only to learn that the train had some kind of issue not far out of the yard. Naturally, by the time I'd learned about all of this and proceeded further north, the Z was finally coming south. More recently, back in November of this year, I chased another early morning 10Z to New Milford only to catch their tail end splitting the southbound signals. Fail number three. Today's fail, fail number two, happened after waiting for more than an hour, yet again, only to give up, head south, and hear the 10Z crew talking with dispatch over the radio. Apparently, something went wrong with the sonic bonnet, which led to the train being stopped around Hot Bottom and ended today's northbound adventure. Although it took four days, the Sonic Bonnet returned on the Train 11Z on October 19 with a very eclectic power combination. On the point, the Sonic Bonnet shined, figuratively speaking that is, and second in line was its rebuilt counterpart SD70 ACC number 1832. And if you look closely, you'll notice that this EMD rebuild has no horse or paint on the nose, making this particular locomotive even more sought after by rail fans. The third bonus on this train, Virginian Heritage Unit number 1069 had recently been outshot from Altoona and was making its way around the system, and by luck, had made its way into Binghamton. I had hoped that the newly repainted track star would come down the line, and what a pleasant surprise it was when I saw it tailgating today's Train 11Z, gliding down grade toward Enola, Hagerstown, Maryland, and Roanoke, Virginia. 